Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Sorry it's a bit late, but I've been very busy this week, and but I've still managed to get it uploaded on a Wednesday, so you've got to give me a bonus for that. But anyway, we're going to be talking about the Packet Squirrel today, which is Hack 5's latest product on their uh, Hack 5 shop. Um, the Packet Squirrel is designed to be a stealthy, pocket-sized, man-in-the-middle um, device that is used to exploit Ethernet. Uh, the idea is that you put this on a network, and any data that passes through it will be, well, you can subject it to a number of different payloads, um, there are three payloads already included with the device. Uh, then payloads are a TCP dump, which essentially gathers all the packets that are on the network, or rather whatever passes through it, it will get the packets and it will dump them onto a USB. There is also a um, DNS spoofing, which allows you to basically take any DNS name you want and point that to another IP address and any device that tries to connect to that domain over this uh, device will go to the IP address that is in the um, in the code. And then finally we have an open VPN which allows you to uh, secure a network or you can even tunnel into it as well. I'm not going to be showing that one this in this video, we're just going to be talking about TCP dump um, and DNS spoofing and just a general overview of the device. Um, so some key features about this device is it's very small, it only weighs about 25 grams, um, it's very stealthy, there's nothing that's too shouty about it, it's just plain black um, and it's got this switch on the side which allows you to select payloads and also put it into army mode which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, suppose that this will last up to a week on a battery bank, I don't know how... Uh, how big the battery bank has to be, but you can do some quick maths um, and you can figure that out. So it takes 100 milliamps to power, and that's all it will use. So you can kind of work that out. So, yeah. Um, so you can see if we just scroll down here, this is how the device is supposed to be used. It is in a stealthy location. You can see here that it is being placed in between um, the internet and a wireless access point. So anyone that is on this wireless access point, all their data is being intercepted by the packet scroll. Um, so let's talk about this four-way switch. So this four-way switch allows you to select up to three payloads and then the last position of the switch enables an arming mode which allows you to SSH into the console which is Linux powered um, and then from there you can create your own payloads. And um, With these payloads you are actually able to um, you can, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I just turned the aircon off. You can create these payloads in Python or Bash or Py uh, PHP. Um, and you can do a variety of different stuff with them. So essentially if you put this on a network with a bit of SSL strip and some TCP dumping You're going to be getting a lot of uh, Credentials that you can use so I'm going to show you the device and I'm also going to show you one of the downsides of this device as well And that is all coming up So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you this device and we're going to install it on my network and we'll do some packet sniffing So this is what the device actually looks like you can see next to like my hand. It's not that big at all This is my Rubik's cube so you can see it's not too big, you know um, so if the lighting's a bit odd, it's because I'm using a very professional LED strip <laughs> to light my area because I'm pro cameraman. Anyway, so this is the device, like I said. Um, this is the four-way switch here, so you got four modes that you can switch like that. You have an RGB LED on top, which is an indicator to as what the device is actually doing. Um, that can be configured in a variety of different ways. And then we've got two USB ports, so you can see, uh, not USB ports, Ethernet ports, so we've got one U uh, Ethernet port there, we have another Ethernet port there, we've got micro um, B power, so you can power the device, there is no battery inside of this, it is simply to be powered, um, you can power it using a PC or your, you know, a battery bank or whatever else. And then on the back here we have a USB 2.0 port which allows you to store payloads. And as far as I know there's no other reason why you would use this port other than storing um, log files and stuff on or probably firmware updates. And then on the back is the um, that sticker. I can't remember what that sticker is actually called. So you can see very min uh, minimalistic. Um, and the idea of the device is that you go ahead, you're going to, so for what we're going to do, we're going to take our USB drive which has to be formatted with NTFS or XFAT. Um, I will also recommend that you use the default allocation size um, because I've had numerous problems trying to get this to work. So NTFS default allocation size and you'll have no issues. And then you go ahead and you put that into the device and then you come along with your Ethernet cable. Um, here's one I made earlier, but I've lost it. Let me get to my Ethernet cable. Okay, I've got my Ethernet cable. And what we do is we say, right, we want all the traffic for this PC to come into the um, into the packet scroll. So you go ahead, 
put in the ethernet and this ethernet will go to whoever you're sniffing i believe i think it's that way and then you want to actually give the client that you're sniffing some internet so you plug it into that and that goes out to you know the one the router the whatever that goes wherever it needs to go and then we want to give it some power so we use some mini b power obviously you won't use a vi a bright vibrant cable like this but it's all i've got so you go ahead give it some power and then with this usb you can plug that into your pc or wherever whatever the nearest usb port is for me i have this battery bank it's 12,000 milliamp hours and i can just go ahead plug that into there and you can see that the device will eventually power up it takes about 10 to 10 seconds from the device to actually power up this is actually flat because it's been ran for quite a while um, so it takes about 40 seconds for the device to power up and then it will start running whichever payload you have selected. So, there we go. Let's go ahead and we're going to install this in my networking cupboard. It's going to change now because I'm on the OnePlus microphone. Um, so, this is the networking cupboard as you can see. It's highly sophisticated, it's just a wardrobe. Um, but the point is that this is where we're going to install the packet squirrel. So I've got the packet squirrel here with the ethernet cable. So this ethernet cable, this side, this is the side that plugs into the PC or the switch where you want to monitor stuff. So that black wire there you can see, um, that is the actual internet. And that's going to go into this side. So what we're going to do is basically replace where that black wire is with this one and then put the black wire in this and we'll be good to go. And that means that I'm now going to be monitoring, um, you can see that, oops, anyway, um, one of the LEDs has died. Um, that is going to be monitoring... Um, all the information that goes across the switch and that wireless router as well so we can go ahead and do that so what we'll do is we'll unplug this black wire here that's going to go into the packet squirrel and we'll take this blue wire and replace to where that black wire was we'll give the packet squirrel some power now this is completely flat now so it's probably not even going to power on but the packet squirrel would power on so i can obviously use a different method of powering it so let's go with the rear usb on the back of the server here okay now you can see the packet squirrel is coming to life there so you can see just there the led is flashing and the power the packet squirrel will be entering its boot up sequence you can see the flashing green light that means it's booting and then i don't know what i don't know what position to switch we're on we're in the wrong mode there so what we're going to do is just reboot it so we're in position one i think position one's there power on the, uh, the packet squirrel and it should start writing information to the uh, USB drive so you can see that the LED has changed to yellow we can't really see on this camera but the LED is now flashing or rather blinking yellow you can see that the USB is flashing occasionally we are now writing a log file here so what I'm going to do is browse the internet for a little bit and we'll get the USB and we'll have a look at some uh, some packets I guess in Wireshark so I've done a bit of packet monitoring now, so what we're going to do is, I should mention, if you do have this device, the little button on the side of the device, you need to press it when you are done uh, capturing information or else you might corrupt your uh, pen drive. So I've plugged the pen drive in, you can see it's called log, that's just what I called it. Inside of there is a folder called loot, and we have TCP dump, and then in here we have two PCAP files. So this is one that I captured today, ignore this one, this is the one I captured today, and we're going to go ahead and open up the... Uh, capture file in Wireshark and you can see we have packets that we can see now There is a lot of information here. We have Sources coming from all kinds of different sources. I don't know. So we have one nine two one six eight ten one three four Who is doing stuff? We have one nine two one six eight ten dot one two three. That's doing stuff uh, So that's the router we have d-link uh, Wi-Fi packets as well. We have um, in here somewhere will be 100, which is me. So somewhere in here, you can see 192.168.10.100. That's me, and we can see all kinds of information here. HTTP data, we got it. Loads of HTTP packets, and we've essentially captured the entire network. Um, don't ask me what these are. Something to do with Wow, maybe. Don't know. But yeah, you can see we've captured some packets. So what we're gonna do now? We're going to have a look at the uh, arming mode, and then once we've done arming mode, we're going to show you. I'm going to show you what these payloads. Well, essentially, what is in arming mode, and then we're going to do some DNS spoofing. Um, so yeah, let's do that bit.
So guys, I've got the device plugged into my PC. We need to switch it to arming mode, and then I'm just going to give it a quick reboot here. Uh, one thing you need to make sure you do is that your network adapter needs to be in DHCP, which mine is not. So we're going to go ahead here, go to IPv4, obtain IP address and DNS servers automatically. And we will just do make sure we have an IP address from the device. So I'll just do a renew to request a new. So it's still booting up, so that's why it says that. Um, so we'll just wait for that to do that, and yeah, we'll be able to have a look then. So at the moment, I don't have any internet. I don't know if it acts as an internet pass-through when it's connected. I imagine it probably doesn't, and you can only configure it this way. If you can, then that's a bonus. Um, but yeah, so it's taking a little while to boot up here, so I'm just going to pause the video because I can't fill this space with anything else. <laughs> and as usual, as soon as I said that, it had finished. So what we can do now, you can see, uh, default gateway is 192.168.321, and we have an IP address here. So we can just use putty and connect to this device. That's where, not that, 172.16.321, are those commas? Yeah, they are. <laughs> Try again, put a uh, 172.16.32.1 and you can log in with, I believe the username and password is, didn't have to check the paper or anything, but default username and password is root and hack five squirrel. And you can see that we are logged in to BusyBox version 1.23.2. And if we do an LS, you can see we've got version and payloads. So if we see it into payloads here, we have switch 1, switch 2, and switch 3. That is how easy it is to actually add payloads. You just go into any of these folders, and you can choose which payload does one. So if we just go ahead and do switch 1, you can see that there is a payload in there. And if we just open that payload up with nano, you can see that the whole, um, the whole payload is here. So this payload is not very long, <laughs> um, but this is uh, the payload for the TCP dump. And you can see here we've got... Um, the LED indicator here as well. That LED is completely RGB as well. Um, so you can use it in a variety of different ways to tell you stuff because obviously there's no screen. Um, so we'll just exit that. If we just come out of here and go to switch number three, and inside of there, this is the config and the payload. And if we open that payload up, this is the payload for the um, OpenVPN, I think. I think that's the VPN. Um, yep, OpenVPN. And if we just finally go to switch number two, we have payload in there and spoof host. So CD into spoof host, or do I have a open it up? And you can see here I've already entered one here, so facebook.com uh, 127.0.0.1. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get the IP address for Google, I want to say. No, I'll get, I'll get a local IP address that I can easily spoof. So the IP address I'm chosen is 192.168.10.123 and that should take me to my router when I try and go to facebook.com. Um, probably, I don't know why I keep doing this with my lips, I'm sorry. Um, so you can see it's very easy on how to add these entries in. You just type in the address equals and then the domain name and then the IP address of where you want it to go. So we're going to control X, save that and we will just exit this session here. And what I'm going to do is turn off the uh, packet scroll. I'm going to give it here all the noise is live i'm going to give it uh, my other ethernet cable here so we have internet i'm going to switch the position of the switch to position two and power on the device again and we should get an uh, an ip and be able to see if this dns spoofing works so the device is just booting up so we'll wait for that and then after that we'll talk about the biggest disadvantage about this device okay so i've done an ip config renew here we are in attack mode because the yellow led is blinking I see that we can access these websites, but if we go to facebook.com, refuse to connect, that's interesting. And if we go ahead and ping facebook.com, you can see that the IP address it's returning is 192.168.10.123. Now, for some reason, I did expect it to go onto the... Oh, my food's ready. Stop that. I did expect it to actually go onto the um, right network, but that might have been a perfectly reasonable explanation for that probably because my dns server i mean my router is now technically the packet squirrel so even though i can ping i don't think it's even alive yeah uh, yeah well it is i guess the reason why i can't access it is because of maybe https i want to say hmm. yeah but you can see it has worked um kind of i believe if you make uh, like an external i can point this to um, say a different IP address that's out on the wide area 
but I'm not too sure why. I expected that to work, but for some reason it hasn't. But they, oh no, it has kind of worked. I don't know why it hasn't worked, to be honest. Um, maybe it's because of HTTPS. I think that's probably why. Um, but yeah, you can see this is uh, this is the package. So let's talk about the biggest flaw with this device, and that is the 10100 Ethernet. So most devices nowadays are all 10100 1000. You can still easily get 10100 Ethernet. Problem is that that is capped at 100, essentially, whereas most of it is capped at 1000. So you're going to notice slowdowns. So at the moment, this device is monitoring ne the network for packets, and this is connecting my PC to the switch, and the packet scrolls in between the switch and my PC. So let me demonstrate something to you guys. We have my <coughs> local machine here, and the Jack Tutorials folder, which is a namespace on my network, and to transfer this over to here, the my PC is going to have to transfer data through the packet scroll to the switch to my server. And what you're going to notice is some pretty drastic slowdowns. So you can see here I'm, I'm moving a 1.6 gig file and it's and the speed it's going at is about 11 megabytes per second. Uh, dropping to 10, you know, doing this kind of information. Oh, we've got a higher 15 there, but you can see it's not going much faster. So what I'm going to do is cancel the operation here. I'm going to unplug and just plug straight into my switch instead of going through the packet scroll. So let's do that. And we'll wait for me to get sorted on that network. And we're there. So we'll just give this a couple of refreshes, make sure we are in that folder. And we're going to transfer this file. So now I'm using 10, 100, 1000. And you can see the big, massive difference in speed. I'm getting 111 megabytes per second now. So if you put this on a network, especially on a main switch, people are going to notice slowdowns and they're going to start complaining. If you're a business owner, like I'm a systems administrator, if someone put this on my network and people started messaging me going, the internet's really slow, I'd start investigating and I would probably find the device had been hidden in the, uh, in the server room or whatever. So that's the biggest reason why this is the biggest downfall of this device. That's the, I can only see that being one, the downfall that I've found so far is just a speed decrease when you're using the device. So that's my uh, first hands-on impressions of the packet scroll. If you'd like to see some videos of some payloads and things like that, do let me know and leave a comment in the, in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that like button and don't forget to share this on all your social media, Facebook and Steam and Twitter and all that kind of stuff. Anyone that'd like to see this, uh, go ahead and um, you know share it out. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, go ahead and press subscribe and press that little bell, uh, that little bell icon and that'll notify you of every upload I do. Um, and yeah, so if you enjoyed the video guys, go ahead and do all that stuff and I shall see you again.